Donna Smith from the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation Office. We're here today at the Higgs Family Farm to recognize Tommy and Beth Higgs as the 2019 Farm Family of the Year. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. Well, thank you. You both were chosen as the 2019 Farm Family of the Year by the local Ag Advisory Board, which is the board of your peers. And they recognize families that have been proactive in agriculture and volunteer work through the community and they chose you too so congratulations thank you yeah. guys thank everybody <laughs> i'm very happy to be here with you i've known you all for a very very long time and you're very deserving of this award there's been so many things that you've done around the community through 4-h through um, community service and through agriculture being good storage of the land is one of the main reasons why the ag board has chosen you to be recognized so we are here to talk about your story and I'm very happy to be able to interview and get that whole story between <laughs> Beth and Tommy. So let's go back a few years. Beth, let's start with you. Oh my. Yeah, and um, your family also farmed in Queen Anne's County. Tell us yeah. uh, what your maiden name was and who your parents were. My parents were Dan and Ann Shortle, hence the maiden name, Shortle. Uh, my grandparents, Dan Shortle, Daniel. Jay Schwartle came from Talbot County, okay. started farming in Queen Anne's County. My dad followed in his footsteps and kept on farming. So you have a long generational history of agriculture in your family. Yep. Yeah, so they started it. Do you remember when your grandparents came from Talbot County and moved to Queen Anne's County roughly? Do you remember if it was, you um, know, like was your parent, was parents your dad? My parents were born in Queen Anne's County. Okay. Okay, so it's been quite a few years ago. It's been ago. quite a few years. They, my father was born in 36. Yeah, so that's great. Right. So they've so, been yeah. here. Your, the Shortle family has been established yep. in Queen Anne's County yes. for many, many, many yes. years. So were they, when they came from Talbot County, like your dad, when he was mil or when he was uh, farming with your grandfather, did they milk cows? Were they just strictly grain farmers? Or? When my, my grandfather bought the farm in Queen Anne's County, he was a dairy farmer and grain farmer. Right. And my dad helped him. Right. And of course, back then, dairy herds were probably 20, 25 cows. And you till just, you know, a few hundred acres. And that's traditionally what I've heard over the years from that long lineage of um, agriculture. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. It was a lot of cows, it seemed like, but I couldn't tell you how many. <laughs> that was going to be on the test. <laughs> so now you... Um, do you have any siblings that were brought up on the farm as well? I do. I have three sisters. Okay. And I have a brother. Right. So were you all involved in the farming operation? Did you have to milk cows when you were little or? We played in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> My oldest sister, Carol, helped occasionally, <clears throat> but we were all really little right. when they did that. And when I was probably in third grade, my dad built chicken houses and my grandfather oh. sold the cows. Okay. So dad started with the chicken houses and Carol and I helped with that and Judy and Joan somewhat. And then Steve ended up, because he was the youngest, he got to stay into it longer. Right, right. So what part of the county were your family established? We were near Roosburg. Okay, all right. And of course now Chris and Sarah, our middle son, married into the Denny family and they still live on that farm. Oh, that's interesting. And they still have chicken houses. Yeah, so your and son and daughter-in-law are on the same farm where your dad had the chicken house. Yes, where she grew that up. we all grew up. <laughs> that is very interesting. That of is. course, we're in the house that Tommy grew up in, so we raised our kids here. Okay, so, so. Tommy, on that note, tell me about your family. Tell me about the Higgs family. Did your parents farm, grandparents, um, or how far do you go back? Okay, well, my <clears throat> on my mother's side, um, in Baltimore County, my grandparents and my grandma or my mother was an Eck, and um, they farmed there for years, forever. For all I know, I can't remember when they actually got started. Right. And then um, <clears throat> my father married my mom, which was an Eck, and I think the early fifties. And then my my parents and Mark Eck's parents, which was Carl Eck. Um, Carl Eck and my mom were brothers and sisters. Yes. Well, they come down here and bought these two farms that we live on today, and um, we started farming down here in 52. Okay. So the Eck farm, which is directly across the road from you all, mm -hmm. that's still being farmed by the mm -hmm. Eck family. Yes. yes. Right. Yep. Right. So yep. you remember when 
um, back when you were little? Did mm -hmm. they milk? Did your parents milk cows? We, or we what kind well, of operation? Yeah, we pretty well always milked cows when we were down here. We started right. out in a staunchin barn, <clears throat> and then we ended up um, building the milking parlor, which uh, it was in the early '60s when they built the milking parlor, and that was probably one of the only milking parlors, a double eight herringbone milking parlor for like miles around. Okay, so you say a double herringbone. Explain that to people that don't know what that <clears throat> well, is. It's a, what is that? It's a, we're staunching bar and your cows come in and they stood there and you had to bend down and put the milkers on them. Right. And this in here, in a um, milking parlor, you actually were in a pit, so the cows were actually eye level with mm -hmm. you. Okay. And um, so you didn't have to, to uh, bend over or nothing like that. And the milkers were right there. You just put the milkers on the cows. And um, you thought you were just up to Oh my gosh, yeah. We, we, we thought we had died and gone to heaven. <laughs> and I mean, it was, it was state of the art at the time. Right. And um, so, and then I guess it's been 14 years ago, I guess we got out of the dairy business. Right. And um, all of us were starting to get to an age where we really didn't want to do it anymore. And plus, we were going to have to put a lot of money back yes. into it to keep going. And right. We didn't want to do it. So now you said us. Out. Tell me about the us. All right. <clears throat> There's originally I had four brothers, and um, my oldest brother was killed. William was killed in a farm accident back in um, I guess the late '60s. Okay. And um, so then it left my older brother Clifford, and <clears throat> the next one is Eugene, myself, and my little brother Mike. So there's four of us that was left here to farm. And, um, and then dad retired, so we started out as the Higgs brothers. And um, so, um, and then just this past year, my oldest brother Clifford, he retired. So it's right. down to three of us now. So originally it was Higgs Brothers Dairy, hence yep. the sign at the end yep. of the driveway. Yeah, no. yep. that's great. So now who's still involved? You don't have dairy cows anymore. So what do you have other than your crops? We're, we got about 80. About 80 head of cow, calf, and finishing beef out there with Angus. Okay. And, All right. Um, now, who is involved with that? Just us three brothers. Okay. Eugene, Clifford, and, mm -hmm. or Eugene, Mike, and myself. Right. Very good. And then, how much do you farm? You know, with the operation that you've got. Now? Um, we're tilling right around a thousand acres, I guess. Right. Okay. Now. All right. That's it, a lot of work. Well, sometimes it is. <laughs> There's times it's too much and there's times it's not enough. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And um, so tell, let's go back a few years. Um, let's talk about when Beth and Tommy were Beth Shortle and Tommy Higgs and then when you met. Tell me that story. Yeah, tell them that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Beth, you tell me the story of when you two met. I don't know. You know, I was friends with Sharon, his cousin. And I used to come up to the pool occasionally with her, and I guess I met him. We started dating. I think it was in 10th grade. Right. That pool probably got a lot of people. <laughs> started. Started. I don't know. Yeah. The, the pool at the Higgs Dairy Farm, or Higgs Family Farm, has a lot of history. A lot of history. I think it's pushing either 50. 53 or 54 years old this year. That's amazing. And tell me about the one thing that everybody loves about that pool. Oh, gosh. The high dive. <laughs> the high dive. And how high is the high dive? It's probably 10, 11 feet. Uh, maybe more than that above the water. I don't know. But it's, it's and, high. And how many people have got to the edge and changed their mind and turned around uh, and came back? Many. Down? Many. <laughs> many. Mostly once, adults. Mostly once adults. They've, yeah, but the once kids, they've done it. They either love it or they hate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that and, interesting? And you feel like you could probably see your house when you're standing mm -hmm. up top. <laughs> and the pool's all concrete, which is another interesting thing. Concrete fiberglass. The fiberglass over top of the concrete. Right. Right. Yep. And there used to be kids that would come here for swimming lessons. Isn't swimming that correct? Swimming lessons. 4-H church groups. Yeah. Lots Everything. of family reunions. Parties. Yeah. So Still Beth, currently you kind of figured you couldn't lose coming to the pool, got a high dive, and a good-looking Higgs brother. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, actually, the high dive was put in after I was already around. Okay. All right. So when did you start dating? What year was that? Oh, gosh. Like 74. 
So when did the, when did graduated. you get married? Seventy six. Okay. So you've been married after I graduated. We've been 40, married for forty three years. Forty three right years. Math? Yeah. See. Yeah, it's forty three years. What? Yeah, it's been forty three years. It's been a long time. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's very unusual yeah, exactly. these days. Exactly. For you all to have dated literally in high school or yeah. close to it and still together today and um You've raised the family. Tell me about your family. We have three sons who've all made us very proud. Um, they all have wives. And we have nine grandchildren. Well, the ninth is on the way. Any time. <laughs> yes. Fair time. Uh-oh. Well, a baby right do the fair. during Little fair time. Girl, yes. Which they got a whole bunch of animals and everything else down there. Uh-oh. So, so who's going to take care of that when the baby comes? Yeah, no clue. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I'm sure. You've got it lined Somebody. up, I'm sure. <laughs> Christy's, Christy's sister, Mandy, I'm sure is going to help the boys. Right. And, of course, Todd, and, or Chris and Adam, everybody's yeah. going to help. Everybody's got to help. Everybody will be yes, there and you, and Everybody knows with 4-H, everybody steps in. Everybody help. steps in and helps. Yes. And goodness knows they do. Yes. And speaking about 4-H, tell me about um, something that you all have done at the 4-H fair for what do, What were we talking about earlier? 20-plus mm. years? 20-plus years. I can't remember. And Beth, it started with your dad. The tell me about what it is and what your dad started. It's the pedal pull with the tricycle, or with the tractors I'm going to pedal put tractors. Two, the pedal tractors toy tractors but they're for adults correct it's for children and adults okay yes okay with the tractors all right and he started it years and years ago with another man and I can't remember who that man was he wasn't from around here and it's a weighted pull just like the Wait big tractors yes. yeah and the kids have loved it for years I mean they come and to sign up early so they can make it on the list because yes. if you don't make it there early enough you're going to be there all night long with those <laughs> children because they all love it everybody wants to ride and then tommy and paul conley took over after dad finished with it and they did it for a while and now tommy and our boys mostly, well, I guess mostly Chris, but Adam and Chris and Todd all help with that. Right. Well, Paul and I, um, we built we built the tractors, and we built the sled, and Modified because the, the other tractors. one, the other the other sled, um, her father Danny had to, we rented it off the guy, I guess. Yes. And uh, so we decided we were going to build our own, and um, so we so built So tell me about sled. that sled. What does that entail? What do you do with the sled? It's just a, it's a weight, it's just like the regular tractor pulls. It's a weighted box that starts out to the bottom and we put weight in the box and as the kids pull it, it cable winds up on the axle and pulls the sled box forward and puts down pressure on the skid, and which it makes, makes it harder, heavier. harder it's to pull. It's hard to pedal once yes. it gets going. I actually participated in that you a couple of years and it was did. really tough. <laughs> I did it the first year. That was kind of it. Yeah, <laughs> it was hard. I, I put in my time, and that was it. We took the regular tractor, little pedal tractors, and um, the one that you actually drove on. We, yes. you see, we cut it in half and extended it out. Put bigger wheels on it, bigger chains, for the big bigger girls and big boys. Yeah. <laughs> and then the so. big boys got a little rough on them, so we had to say just the the adult women and the children. Yeah. But you know, it it has. The whole thing has lasted. I mean, I'm surprised that yes. they've all stayed together and held up as good as they have. Consider, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. I think the only time that they really got abused was the year there was a bunch of football boys that come in there and they decided that they were going to do it. <laughs> they and were I competing. Said, do you see yeah. you guys? I said, you all going to tear my sled up? And, they, and he said, well, we'll pay if we tear it up. We'll pay to have it fixed. I said, okay, you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but they were all good. They bent the sprocket on a little bit, but it was, we fixed it up. It was all right. But so they had fun. with 4-H, too, um, you've been involved in other stuff with 4-H. Weren't your kids oh. involved in 4-H and showing for a few oh. years? I, we, my, my sisters and my brother and I all grew up in 4-H, and then our kids grew up in 4-H, and they've shown pretty much everything. And now your stock. grandchildren are showing. And now all our grandchildren are showing. Well, not all of them, no. There's four of them so far. Yeah, that that's are great. doing that. That's great. The four older boys. But I've been involved in, well, when the Young Farmers were around there. We had the first 
actually three wheeler mud hop down there. I don't know how many remember that. Right. Um, which I thought were ever pretty big. Um, the young farmers, we actually did built the tractor pool, the track down there and started the tractor pool down there. And um, and the outhouse races. Yeah. <laughs> don't you remember that? No, those? I don't remember that. that. that really? Was cool. <laughs> and um, and then in the last, I don't know, three years or so, we started the, the adult tricycle races, which right. I think has gone over pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty. It's a pretty funny thing. And yeah, that's fun. So I hope it does well this year, too. Yeah. So the, you've literally been involved in 4-H ever since you were both oh was those kids in we were, since, yeah. Yeah, yeah since we could join 4-h yeah. we've both been in 4-h yeah. and stayed in it and stayed volunteering for all these years yeah hence the volunteering and the community service and you know staying involved with the ag community um let's go back to the farm um farming together with your brothers um and your wife i'm sure beth has participated too and beth i know you have a home daycare that's something you've done for many, many years. Many, and, many years. Um, but you all have worked together as mm -hmm. a family. How's that been? I think well, it's been great. They've uh, all I worked mean, at considering brothers, you know what brothers can be. Yes. I think we've gotten along really good, um, you know, as brothers. Um, yeah, we probably all kept into some stuff that we probably should have kept in. <laughs> <laughs> We just didn't say what was on our minds, that's all. Right. Um, no, but I think we've done well for our brothers um, to stay in there and, and be able to have. get along and, and keep doing it yeah. as long as we have. Yeah, and that's very important. And you all are still close. We are. We are. And then you live literally right, right. next to each other. Yes. On the fork. Or all, uh, we live on the farm. All of us live on the farm. Yeah, and that's pretty amazing to be able to go um, through the hard times and the good times. Mm -hmm. and be able to stay together as a family and still get along mm -hmm. you it know is. that's that's been that's quite an accomplishment they learn to grumble and walk away come back and get over it that's good <laughs> that's good that's very important that's very important so in the years that you've been farming and been involved in 4-h and been married in your 43 years what do you think has been one of your greatest accomplishments our kids yeah we've been lucky that you know we got through high school nobody got in big trouble we survived everything that they threw at us. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's based on how you raised them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And how well, you were I raised. Well, I think, but mm -hmm. it, you know, that, the saying, it takes a village. You know, your friends, your family, everybody has a hand in it. Yes. Yeah. So as far as farming, what's been the biggest challenge for you? Mm-hmm. Knowing whether to stay in it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the same thing as everybody else. I mean, you know, between weather, prices, and everything else out there. Mm -hmm. It's and been tough over the years. Cows, it's It was one a of big them decision things. with the cows to let them go. Right. But I'm, at this point, I'm glad they're going. Yes. I've never regretted it. That's put it that way. I mean, mm -hmm. that's one of them jobs that I feel for everyone out there that has cows. I really do. I, and the first winter that he looked out the upstairs window and saw snow on the ground, and he didn't have to go out there and deal with it. Deep snow on the ground. <laughs> he was grateful. Yeah. I mean, the people that don't, aren't involved with animals and go through a hard winter like that with they frozen no pipes. Idea. And, you know, and having to plow out your driveway to get the milk truck up here because the milk still has to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's challenging at best. Yeah, but, um, very much. Following everything out. Yeah, and the weather is, uh, you know, that's probably one of the consistent things that I've heard from year to year interviewing families, the weather. Mm -hmm. And is, you can't control it. No. You have you to know, learn and thank goodness we it. can't, because that probably wouldn't right. be a good thing either. <laughs> right? <laughs> Not sure what we would choose. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a really interesting question now. Oh. So tell me something about either you as individuals or as a couple that not many people know. But what would oh, be gosh. something interesting that you would think? We're pretty, that we like each other. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. We all know that. Anybody that knows you all knows you like each other. Oh, gosh, I don't know that every, I mean, we're pretty open. Everybody pretty much knows everything, I think. There's Anything? something that you said to me earlier that you fly underneath the radar. You fly below uh, the drama. No drama. No yeah. drama. Which is good. 
What do you think? You is, know, with age comes that, you know, yes. and it just, you learn that some things are just not important. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do you think has about. been key for those young people out there that may watch this video about what has kept your marriage solid through the 43 years? Not walking away when you get angry. <laughs> there you go. Yep. You know, so many people just cut out now and think it's, oh, it's over and it's not. Do you think part of your farm heritage is part of that too? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, it's just, Patience. I, I think mm -hmm. growing up on a farm, you can't get any other better life growing than growing up on a farm. I am so glad that my kids had the opportunity to, oh, absolutely. <clears throat> to grow up on the farm and be part of it. Right. And, um, you know, back in the day, shoot, when back in the day when I was a kid, I mean, you know, you, as a kid, you couldn't wait to get in the barn and milk cows and do whatever about it, everything right, everybody child. else is doing. Then when you got old enough to be able to do it, then you didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> then it became right. a job. And my right. kids were the same way, you know? Yeah. Yep. So, um, but, yeah, I'm glad we got out when we did. That's for sure. No, well, and you know, that's, it, it's when you've done it for so long and your family has that heritage and to make that decision when something ends, that's a very difficult decision. Well, I thought it was sad when the cows were gone, you know. Mm -hmm. I, Knowing your I heart liked, of hearts that it was the right decision, but it oh, was still I knew, hard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was a, it was a error gone by then. Yeah. But you don't see many dairy cows around now, even right. though we have them down the road, but you don't see them out in the field. Yeah. yeah. Tommy, do you remember where you took Beth on your first date? Mm. <laughs> Or should I ask about that? Yeah, you might want to ask her that one. Let's see if she knows. Bowling, I think. Well, Bowling? Yeah. Fun. Ooh. Who won? You better have let her won. Sure I did. Or win. No. Excuse me. That's yeah. why we stay together. <laughs> you let her win at bowling. That's um, great. That's great. Um, so is there any last thoughts that you would like to say, um, either to each other or the um, audience that will be watching this video that you would oh, like goodness. them to know about Tommy and Beth Higgs? Oh, goodness. I really do. <laughs> no? No, you know, it's just, life's not the struggle everybody thinks it is. And yes. It's just to be happy and For sure. enjoy your children. Yeah. I'm not, enjoy life. I'm not saying farming is the easiest thing out there in the world to do. Oh. And God knows I've had my issues growing up farming, but I don't think I'd ever change anything different. That's pretty amazing to be able to say that after you've been in your entire life, literally for both of you, mm -hmm. but you know, that you wouldn't change that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, congratulations again. Well, thank, well, you. thank you. We I will see you at the fair on Wednesday night for you to be recognized. And you're so deserving of this. And I've been so fortunate and privileged to be able to sit with you all and interview you and talk about your story. And Likewise. yes, you do have a story, just like everyone else. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, you, yeah, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>